Well, today we have got a very, very different vehicle to what I've been driving in the last few videos. I am in a thousand pound scrapyard motorhome. This is Doug, a one of a kind 1990 Ford Apache motorhome that was left abandoned and wrecked on the side of the road. Oh dear, that is not looking too good. With the end in sight, a king and queen dressed in shining armor took a risk to give this old motorhome a second chance at life. Today, I get to fully test out and experience if Doug's glory days are behind him or not. Wow. So, oh God, sorry, love. What the heck have I just done? First things first, I've been given a box here from Neil, which is actually a power battery because apparently Doug, the van I'm in right now, might not actually start first time. Wipers are on, turn them off somehow. We've got battery. <laughs> the wipers are still on. That doesn't sound too healthy, does it? One more time. Well, this is just a great start. We're gonna have to pop the bonnet and try and jump it. Windscreen wipers are still on. I still don't know how you turn those off. A few moments later. I'd like to go and get Neil, the owner of the van, to see if he can help me. Right, this should be it. Oh! He sounds like a flipping tractor. Oh man, this vehicle is so... What's the word I'm looking for? Full of character, shall we say. Whoa, Doug, whoa, Doug. Oh, Dougie, whoa, we are very close here. He's a big boy, holy Jesus. Oh my God. The steering on this is very heavy. It's got a horn. See you later, Neil. My God, he's a heavy boy. Wow. So this week, you may be wondering, Will, where are you? The reason I'm shouting is the vehicle is so noisy. I'm up in Liverpool and I've come to check out this vehicle, which is a 1990 Ford motorhome. And it's from my good friends, Neil and Emma, who bought it for a thousand pounds a few months ago. You see this big jalopy here? I've just bought it. They then spent about six weeks renovating it into the motorhome that I'll show you later. The inside is like, what could only be described as a um, horror movie. To say that this thing has had a past life would be an understatement. Bedroom may have a small bit of mould. I think it's just surface. Oh my days. There's a lot of things wrong or mildly wrong with it which uh, I can't wait to show you. First things first, a 20 minute drive to one of the local beaches here in Liverpool because I thought, why not? <laughs> Don't go around the corner too fast. Well, wow. whoa. Oh dear, I've got cupboards opening, the curtains opening as well. There is a couple of problems with him in terms of actually driving him. The fact that I can't actually move this seat backwards or forwards. The seat rails, the seat bolts are that rusty that Neil couldn't move it. Luckily, I'm still able to drive him, but I would like to move the chair back a couple of inches, but I can't, so I've got to make do with what I've got today. Oh man, this thing swerves all over the shop. Oh, what was that? What was that noise? Slow down, slow down, boy. Wow, these brakes are uh, something else. I seem to be creating a bit of a traffic jam of cars behind me. Sorry, there's not really much I can do, to be honest with you. My foot's flat and we're moving. Where I've parked up right now to quickly show you around this vehicle is probably a prime location where Doug, the 1990 Ford Apache, actually came from. We're currently missing one of the window covers. We've got what Neil described as some aircon, which is just brilliant, aka 
a shed load of rust. This is a lovely little feature. It's actually got one of these door handles, which I've never seen before on any other vehicle, but it just works quite well. If you just pull this somehow, the door opens by itself. So uh, if you want to pick one of these up, I'll leave a link in the description. The door handle, yeah, is a little bit broken, but thankfully there is a way to get inside and outside the vehicle. We've got some trim or plastic, oh God, some plastic covering that's coming off there. Paint missing, rust absolutely everywhere. They bought this vehicle for a thousand pounds. I think uh, Neil said that he actually found it just pretty much on the side of the road outside his house. The guy tried to actually get 2,000 pounds from them, but they managed to bargain him down to a thousand pounds and they have done an entire video series on actually buying this van, which trust me, looked a hundred times worse than what it does right now. They've done so much work to it and really turned something that was gonna be scrapped and crushed by a machine and turned it into a very fun little motorhome that they've been away to Scotland in. They've had some amazing adventures so far and I think it's brilliant. It's super inspirational and it has made me want to really get something like this and actually give it a new life. Anyway, moving on with the rest of the vehicle, this window here, you can't quite see it, but there's actually water inside it. <laughs> We've got here, I would assume, the cassette toilet, which um, isn't quite watertight, shall we say. From a distance, he looks good as new. When you get closer into the details, that's when you start to see the life that this vehicle has had. On the back here, he's looking a little bit worse for wear. Just a uh, nice, rugged, old tyre. We've got some storage in the back there. Parts of the vehicle are just kind of flaking off, more rust. You do have the ladder on the top left, a reverse camera, which I believe doesn't quite work. And then coming round the side of him, you've got exactly the same. And this is why he's called Doug, because adventure is out there, which is from the film Up, if you haven't seen it, which is a great film. There are a few more quirky little things going on, on the outside. One thing I have to show you is this, if I can do this. Oh dear. Neil, that wasn't me. I don't know why that is open. Maybe it just comes open when you drive. You can tell this vehicle is a little bit worse for wear, rough around the edges. Vehicles like this are just quirky, they're full of character, things go wrong, which just makes the experience, yes, a little bit more stressful, but a little bit more memorable. So I do want to actually show you the cab area as well, because, well, we're missing the cover for the window, which uh, isn't a problem. But uh, I said it's very basic, and that's because it is very basic. There's literally nothing in here. You've got some old style knobs and switches for the... Oh dear, what the heck have I just done? Let's just push that back in there and pretend nothing ever happened. My favorite thing, to be honest, is this massive steering wheel and this, the gear stick. Look how big it is, it's massive. Makes you feel like you're driving a big old bus. Before I show you the inside of Doug, the living area, the sleeping area, the cooking area, where I'm gonna be camping out tonight. Let's head to a supermarket, grab up tonight's ingredients, and then let's go and find a park up to park up this bad boy and spend an evening, trust me, of luxury in this beaten down but revived motorhome. We've got no warning lights on the dash, which is good. It, wow, well we were, he's done. Whoa, 260,000 miles, which is a hell of a lot of miles. No wonder he sounds like this. These old vehicles, there really is something about driving them, which is just so much more enjoyable than a modern vehicle. Probably because you actually have to think and put some effort into driving. This is over 20 years old. I'm not gonna say it drives like brand new, but it's done 260,000 miles and it drives, it gets you from A to B. You've got a home on wheels for such a cheap, affordable price. All right, we're just pulling into, wow. So, oh God, sorry love, Tesco. Try not to take anyone out. <laughs> So there's no central locking on the vehicle, obviously. Like I said, there's no buttons or anything. It's so old school. Hopefully that's locked. I'm gonna take that as locked. Oh dear. Okay, probably push that in. Oh, 
There we go. Doug is all locked up and uh, he basically covers one and a half parking bays. Well, you certainly can't miss the motorhome in the distance. The ingredients for tonight's dinner have been picked up. And if you can't guess what I'm cooking tonight, well, then you haven't watched the channel for long enough. And also, if you want a weekly dose of what I'm getting up to, make sure to head down to the link in the description because I've actually got a weekly newsletter that goes out every single week so that keeps you guys up to date with things going on in my life, things going on with the channel. So head over to www.wheelsweek.com. .co.uk. One thing I do need to figure out is actually how to turn on these headlights because that I'm genuinely not sure on. I think the headlights are on this switch here because obviously it comes up on the dash and you can just about see the lights coming on in the distance. I just want to jump out out of interest to see what they're actually like. Not actually as bad as I expected. I think Neil actually did change the headlight bulb so it means I should actually be able to see when it gets dark. So tonight's car park looks currently like I could be in the middle of the forest, but that isn't what I was expecting. Hopefully we should be going down to the beach. Whether I can stay here and whether there's a height barrier, currently I have no idea. Welcome to Formby. Local nature reserve. Cars eight pound 50, horse box is 25 pound. I think this is probably closer to a horse box than it is a car. There are gates and barriers, but from what I read online, apparently they don't get closed. No overnight parking or camping. This looks like a great spot though. Right in amongst the sand dunes. I don't see any other camper vans, which is a tad alarming, shall we say. So currently, where I'm parked up in the van is a place called Formby, I believe, beach. Not an area or a part of the UK I'm familiar with whatsoever, Liverpool. But uh, there was a sign when I came in saying no overnight parking. But who's really going to know? That's the thing about Doug. No one would ever know you're camping and sleeping inside that, would they? It's an absolutely beautiful spot. There's a massive car park here, more over there, more behind those bushes. And uh, yeah, it just goes on forever and ever. Seems like there's loads of different little routes to walk all over the sand dunes and stuff. What a cracking spot. And uh, if I can get away with it, in this motorhome. It should be a great night, camping inside, chilling out. Football's on this evening, so I'm excited for that. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. So this was the thing that I wanted to show you. There's actually a step wall that, uh, to be honest with you, doesn't feel particularly strong, but hopefully it should be strong enough to get you in and out of the vehicle. Oh man. Let me whack the lights on and then I'll show you exactly what it looks like in here. Oh, nice. One. Two. Three. <laughs> it's not the most bright van, but it certainly does a job. I'm a little bit too tall for this vehicle and that is probably one of the only downsides, in my humble opinion. Because, have a look at this. This, ladies and gentlemen, has been completely, completely transformed. Because like I said, when they bought it, it looked absolutely nothing like this. Neil and Emma have done such an amazing job at really making this feel like a proper, cosy little space. I mean, look how beautiful and communal that is, having a bench there, a bench at the back, and a bench on the other side. A table in the middle, which can be removed and taken out, and then two people could actually sleep down here. You've got all of this nice cupboard space. The kitchen in here is bloody brilliant as well, and it's the first time ever I can actually use a microwave and I'm not quite sure why that's not powering on. I've probably done something a little bit wrong. 
Is that what I need to do? We have power, ladies and gentlemen, to the microwave. And can you believe it? The first time I'll ever have used a microwave in a vehicle will be tonight in this vehicle, which costs two thousand pounds. I've done motorhomes that cost seventy, eighty thousand pounds, and I've never been able to use the microwave because you need to actually plug in and hook up to mains power. But with the electrical system that Neil's done in here, he's got a leisure battery, and uh, you have to hold the cupboard up with your head, and also this anchor power bank which also powers the entire system and the 240 volt as well so underneath here we've got a two hob gas burner we've got a nice sink oh dear i've just flicked the light off we've got a sink here with oh i flicked the light off again <laughs> with running water which is great and then uh, down here obviously a fridge and some cupboard space behind me you've actually got more cupboard space which I've just dumped a load of my stuff in there, even more cupboard space in there, and then two additional spaces for your bits and bobs. One of the best features about this vehicle, apart from the fact that I can't stand up, but that's because I'm six foot two, six foot three on the dating apps, as we all know. You probably need to be at least five foot nine to be able to stand in here and walk in here comfortably. Inside here, there's a bathroom, a whole bathroom with a light switch somewhere. This isn't my van, so. Found the light switch. There it is up there. Labeled 12 volt bathroom light. That kind of makes a bit of sense, doesn't it? So in the bathroom, it's your very old school, classical motorhome kind of bathroom. We've got a boiler here to obviously heat up the water to, uh, to have a shower. You've got a toilet there and also your sink drops down in here. I don't always think a toilet or a shower room is that necessary. But when you've got a vehicle of this size, it just makes total sense and it adds that extra level of comfort. So through this little gap, is of course the cab area where I was driving. But again, the great thing is that you can be relatively stealthy in this vehicle. In the sense of, there's this curtain here that Neil made himself. You just draw that along. And that not only helps to trap all of the air and the heat in the vehicle, but also means the cab area is kind of left as if somebody isn't actually using the vehicle, but then you're in the back just living inside it. One of my favorite features has absolutely got to be this old control panel. I mean, look how classic that is. All of the switches, just the the brown style of it. The battery condition is just on a little dial system there. I wouldn't want to touch too much of it because I'll probably end up killing myself. But uh, yeah, these kind of old classical characteristic touches are really what makes this vehicle. If you're wondering where I'm sleeping, it's up here above the cab, which uh, I can't wait for. There's not a huge amount of space up there and I'll crawl into bed later and show you what it's actually like. And uh, the way to get up here is actually with this ladder. I just hook it onto the edge of the bed, take my shoes off, climb up, and it's gonna be like sleeping in a coffin, but it's gonna be lovely and bloody warm and super cozy. I told you tonight was full of luxury because I've got a TV. I can watch the football, I can cook up my chicken fajitas, and there's also a heater, which I'm going to turn on right now, if I can remember how to. Brilliant. So I think it's that button on. Oh, wow. The heater even talks to you. That's got to be the most bougie heater I think I've ever seen. I can't express this enough. This vehicle is the absolute epitome of buying something that was relatively shit and then converting it into something like this for such an affordable budget it's super relatable because most people can do something like this and you genuinely have a home on wheels that costs no more than two thousand pounds and that you could travel around the world in potentially anyway so from the outside you wouldn't really have a clue that anybody's actually inside because they are completely blackout. There is not one ounce of light leaking through that would show that somebody is inside, but probably in the cab area, there's a little bit. There's a little bit at the top there, but not a huge amount. You could do more of a job at covering it up, but in a vehicle like this anyway, people know what's going on in terms of somebody's gonna be in there sleeping or living in it. So the only thing I'm hoping for now is that in about an hour, a warden or someone doesn't come by and kick me out, which could well happen. But if it does, I'll just move on and find somewhere else. But if not, I'm gonna enjoy a night camping inside Doug. I need to do something to prove to you guys that I read the comments. 
Bear with me. I've put a tea towel. Well, before the camera flopped over, I put a tea towel underneath the chopping board just to uh, stop it sliding because the amount of comments I get saying, Will, please put something underneath that chopping board. I've now listened, I've now learnt, and, uh, you know, life's all a lesson. Here we go, the final ingredient, the stuff of gods. Roasted tomato and pepper, medium fajita, El Paso mix. Why have they still not sponsored me? I have no idea. Oh boy, here we go. Fajitas are done. That's why I love cooking these because they're just so quick and easy. One pan, a pack of wraps, a pack of cheese and you got yourself some delicious tasty easy probably not so healthy dinner this is the current setup all set out i do have the tv on however it seems as if the one place i've actually parked in this car park doesn't have internet the car park is massive so i'm hoping if i just move to a slightly different part of the car park i then might get some phone signal because ideally i was hoping for a nice night of fajitas Sitting in the van, nice and warm, and uh, chuck the football on and watch Chelsea win. Or probably not. Mm. El Paso, my friend. I've missed you. I'm on the hunt for better phone signal. Hopefully I don't have to go too far. Well, would you believe it? The one place where I've actually found signal is right next to a church and a cemetery. And uh, it's only two minutes from where I just was. And I wanna go back there and park up and actually sleep. It's only half seven and I wanna enjoy being inside Doug, enjoy having the luxury and the space to move around and enjoy watching the football. So um, it's well worth it to have driven two minutes just to get internet signal to come and watch the FA Cup. Aston Villa versus Chelsea. <laughs> You absolute beauty! How'd you mute the bloody thing? Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. I'm basically in a living room, in a motorhome. This is, without doubt, one of the most comfortable vehicles that I've been in within the last year, easily. Oh, 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 oh. Living the life, baby. <laughs> Nicholas Jackson, baby. Come on, the boys. We're 3 0 up, so I cannot complain. And there's one thing that I forgot to completely show you guys and actually enjoy myself. And that's dessert, my favorite dessert ever, chocolate fondant, or what these are, chocolate sponge puddings. Microwave is on, we have power. <laughs> Chuck that in there. Press one minute, there we go. 40 seconds to wait, and dessert is on the cards. That's 40 seconds. Oh, how's a wee -wa? Oh my God, that's so hot. Well, I've got a heart attack inbound. But it's okay, because I've got the football on and uh, this is gonna be lovely. I think this is the first I've ever, I may have actually had a dessert in any video ever, which isn't that exciting, I know, for you guys, but it is for me. Mm. Wow, well, we were. So tonight's bed 
looks so, so cozy. I can just pull that over. I've got a reading light up there. You've got another light up here. It's literally like your own little cocoon. It looks so cozy in there. You've also got this blind or curtain, which you can just pull across on either side. So uh, it should at least trap some of the heat in there. And obviously, if you had more than one person in here, it would add a nice bit of privacy. I do hope that the uh, doors are all locked, that this side door is locked and that nobody can get in. <laughs> wow, it's a little bit tight in here, but my God, is it gonna be cozy? <laughs> I do have just enough legroom to reach out, especially if I sleep sideways. I can imagine with, uh, well, with two people in here, it would definitely be a tight squeeze. What a cracking setup this is. Good morning from a very unexpected, miserable rainy day. <laughs> I woke up this morning to the noise of seagulls walking all over the roof of the van. There's a few cars parked up, probably walking their dogs and stuff. As you can see, the rain is coming down. So I've had the heater on pretty much all night. In fact, I have, and I've, uh, I've had it on the entire time since I've been here. And it's been great, lovely and warm. And it's so nice to be able to just come down from where you've slept and then come into an area like this. And I know I've said this a few times, it just, this is probably one of the most homely vehicles I've been in. The fact that it genuinely does feel like you could be at home. This really is not beach weather at all. Doug, are you gonna play ball? Are you gonna start for me this morning? No problemo. Let me know down in the comments if you guys want to see another van build on a vehicle like this. Something cheap, affordable, that's had a bad life and that needs to be given some love and some TLC because I think a project like this could be a hell of a lot of fun. If you guys have enjoyed today's video, please make sure to give the video a like, make sure to subscribe and let me know what vehicle you want to see me go out in next?